Here's a fun little experiment with Venturi's and Vortex's lift and drag. I always found it interesting, not so much that the screwdriver flies, but that it doesn't fly away. And that's not what you came to see. You came to see this, so let's have a look at the new Generation 2 steam turbine. So I try not to ramble too much in my videos, but a lot of people complain that I didn't explain the original turbine enough. So before we even get started, for those that haven't watched the original turbine and are going to say, oh gee, another turbine doing nothing, uh, I have charged batteries, and you can see that in the original video linked above right now. Uh, the goal of this turbine was to cut the steam consumption way down and bring the power way up. And I think I've done it. Just an overview, if you didn't watch the other video, this is a solar charge controller. It works great. You can interface with solar panels with this unit. Uh, charge batteries independently. Charge your cell phone. It has many functions. I use it primarily obviously to charge batteries, but as far as the readout, I just use the amp, I use it as an amp meter, and I also use it to uh, for the high voltage shutoff when the batteries are charged. This is a voltmeter that uh, shows independently the, the uh, turbine output, and of course the disconnect switch from the charge controller when needed. The power takeoff is probably the most challenging part. Uh, the turbine bearings are very delicate, they're not really even bearings, the turbo shaft just floats in oil and it can be damaged very easily. So the power takeoff is solid yet independent of the turbine. The turbine is actually, you can flex around, this cannot. One has to be solid, one has to flex. It's been through a lot, the turbine bearings are intact. And now I'm going to turn it around and show how we plan on getting more power with less steam. First of all, I have to point out that in my experience, steam is like three times more powerful than air. So you're going to see an air test today, but keep that in mind that steam will do so much more. And this is designed to work on steam and not air. Here's why. We'll just start with the DC motor, belt driven. I'm not sure I'm going to stay with that. They, they're strong and they work. I'm probably going to go with gears though. The power takeoff is just a set of bearings, solidly mounted and exactly aligned with the turbo shaft. On the previous turbine, I used just the tail end. This time the injector is going to spin the tail end to do all the work, run the motor, and run the air compressor. This is going to compress cold air and mix it with the steam after it's done interacting with the blades and exiting. And this uh, should super contract the steam, creating uh, a massive pressure differential as it exits out through the venturi. And that pressure differential should increase the overall flow immensely and help the turbine wheel spin more freely. In theory, we can't test that last part today with air, but I'm going to run it up uh, it, it's very fun to watch. It's fun to listen to. I'm sure my neighbors are getting aggravated, but it does seem to work well. Other people have heard it and they say, what's that vibration? It's not a vibration. It's this bad boy. It's permanent magnets doing their work. This thing makes some noise as those magnets go around. You'll see that the turbine itself runs very smoothly. The bearings run smoothly. This makes a lot of noise. Ask anybody that owns a uh, windmill. One would ask, why are we not testing it with steam today? Uh, that's because I'm in between boilers right now, and my second boiler won't be ready until the fall. It's just getting too hot here in Florida to weld. All right, here we go. I don't know if you can read it. The voltmeter goes up to 18. I'm going to 
spool it up slow, let everything marry, and bring it up to 18 or so. I have to do it slowly because it will exceed it. And then we're going to bring it back to about 14, which is going to be the normal operating speed.